assalamu alaikum uh, welcome to lecture 20 of natural language processing so uh, we were not able to have a lecture in the last session so uh, so this is lecture 20 and uh, i think we have missed two sessions uh, in this semester so far so we will, be, we will be making up some of these sessions later on in the semester. Uh, of course, the counting that I'm following in these uh, sessions is based on the actual lectures that we have conducted. So this is lecture 20 that we are conducting today. <clears throat> so uh, so we, were, we had started discussing recurrent neural networks uh, last week and uh, so we will continue with that discussion today and go over the uh, equations for recurrent neural networks, uh, discuss very briefly the training of recurrent neural networks, and then also discuss how recurrent neural networks can be used to solve uh, some uh, sequence modeling problems. Once we are done with that, we will then discuss some extensions uh, for, for example, the GRU and the LSTM. And then, of course, later on, we'll also discuss the transformer. So, so basically, the next three, four lectures would be based on uh, neural network based sequence modeling. So, that's uh, the agenda for today. Uh, so we're also into the last month of the semester. So you have two main deliverables left. One is a project and the other is assignment four. Uh, so please uh, dedicate time for these two instruments as well. Uh, assignment four will primarily be on sequence modeling for uh, using neural networks. And of course the project you started last week. So you have one main deliverable. The deadline for the project would most likely be in the exam week. So most likely after Eid. But of course, assignment four would be, uh, would have 10 to 15 days once it is released. <clears throat> All right, so any questions? So we have a quiz as well uh, at the end of session today. This quiz essentially would cover, I think, one lecture because we were not able to uh, have a lecture in the last session. But still, uh, we are continuing with the practice of having a quiz on Thursday. All right, so we were discussing recurrent neural networks last time. And uh, we will discuss a diagram as well for RNN. Uh, but as I mentioned last time, the, one of the best ways to understand recurrent networks is through equations. So let me write those equations again. Uh, and of course, along the way, we'll discuss the notation again. So we have an activation that comes out of the recurrent layer, which is A. This activation, of course, would be a vector in general, which means that the recurrent layer would have a number of units but I'm not going to bold it. So you understand that this is a vector. It might be a scalar in which case it is just one unit. So the output at time T, and of course recurrent has a, a time-wise input of information. So some function F, activation function F, usually a tangent hyperbolic of W AX. This is a weight matrix that multiplies with your input X at time t plus you have a recurrence weight matrix as well a a that multiplies with a of the previous uh, time step plus there is a vector of bias which we say is b a so this is the equation for the recurrence layer okay and this is of course the main equation. So you notice that to get the output at the time point T, you need the input at T 
time t as well as you need the output of the same layer at the previous time step. And both of these inputs to this time step, the x as well as a of the previous time step are modified by appropriate parameters. So one is waa and the other is wax. The notation that we are using is the capital W subscript AA. So the first A basically means that the out, first A basically means that the input, sorry, the first A basically means the output. So output of course is AT and the second A means the input, input of course is also A which is AT minus one. And if you look at this notation for WAX, X is the input, A is the output. And of course, for different T's, uh, this would be repeated. So this is the main recurrence layer, but since we need to make a decision at each time step, you also have an output layer that processes the output at each time step to give you the output. So we call that, let's say, Y at time T is equal to some other function G of W, Y, A, again, the same notation because it takes as input A at time T and outputs Y plus B, Y, bias vector. You will always have a bias vector. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, essentially that's it. So this was a standard, you can say, standard, single layer unidirectional recurrent neural network. And of course, we will uh, discuss extensions later on. So they could be bi-directional as well, and they could be multiple recurrent layers. And of course, if they have multiple recurrent layers, as we'll see later on, those equations would be repeated. But we will start with the basic architecture. So what are the parameters of this model, of this standard model? All those Ws and B are the parameter. So if I talk about W, A, X, so it takes as input X and outputs A, and A of course is the first index of the matrix. So how many A units that do we have? So let's say N is the number of recurrent units. And then M is input. So let's say N. So units. So in other words, this is the main layer or hidden layer of the neural network. And N number of inputs. Okay. And then of course we have BA. This is a vector of size, basically of the size of the hidden layer or recurrent layer, which is N. Then we have WAA. Uh, this is of course N into N matrix. And then we have, uh, yeah. So we have the output feed forward uh, layer, which is WYA. Output Y uh, would depend on the type of uh, the task that you are solving. So if it is softmax, uh, or multi-class classification, you have K classes into the number of hidden units, which is N, okay? And if it is uh, binary, of course, there will be just a single output unit. And then of course, B, Y is simply uh, K. So these are the parameters of this uh, unidirectional single layer recurrent neural network. So let me uh, use a simple figure to illustrate this.
So, <clears throat> so you can think of a single unit as this. So let's say I draw a circle. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm going to draw this schematically. So you have actually four things that are occurring here. So you have, of course, an output from this, which is A at time T. Okay. So we have an input, which is X at time T. Of course, when you write this notation as uh, you- uh, Excuse me, sir. Sir, could you display your screen? What are you doing? You are writing what you are writing on the whiteboard. Okay. So, is this a white screen? Yes, sir. White screen is coming, but the pen marking is coming. Are you writing? No, sir. Okay. Let's see. 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 Why is it not writing? I'm not too sure. Anything? No, sir, not yet. Achha, thik hai. Uh, thik hai. Let's see. Uh, how am I going to verify this? Achha. ये फिर चार्ज होगा हमने टू शो चार्ज अब उन्हें किया तो था एक साम टाइम्स बैक अच्छा चलें ठीक है So let me uh, try to simulate it. It's actually a simple diagram, which we are going to use to represent this uh, in typing. So, <clears throat> so you have, uh, <clears throat> so let's say you have a unit, okay? This is the unit or the layer. If it is a layer, then it's a whole vector of units, <clears> okay? <throat> and to this, So you have an output, which is of course, A, T. And you have an input, which is X, sorry, A, T minus one, okay. So this is the recurrence. Of course, we are showing it schematically. If you draw it in somewhat more realistic, say you would think, think of this as a unit, जिससे वापस आ रहा है ए, ठीक है? वही जो ए टी वापस जा रहा है। But the, those diagrams tend to be quite confusing if you draw it for more complex networks, ठीक है? And then uh, up here, so the output. So the output here would be, of course, y, t, and then the input, input, of course, arrow upward. So I can't draw the arrow here. Uh, so this is uh, your x, t. So with x, t, you have the a parameter w a x with a t you have the parameter or with a t minus one you have the parameter w a a with y t you have the parameter w y a and of course with the corresponding biases so these are the three you can say activations or uh, learnable parameters that occur in a standard recurrent neural network you have 
x with xt and a t minus one, you have parameters. Uh, xt, of course, is w uh, ax, and with a t minus one, you have w a a. So these are two parameters. Then you have a parameter with the output, which is w y a. And of course, this I've drawn this as a unit. You can think of this as a layer, as a box. And if it is a layer, then of course you have multiple A's and you have multiple, uh, uh, so multiple A's that are coming out and the number of A's that are coming out are equal to the number of units in the recurrent layer, which is N. Okay. So it would, A then would be a vector. And of course, X in general would also be a vector and Y in general can also be a vector. All right. So, <clears throat> so now let's uh, look at uh, an example in which, uh, but for which RNN can be used, and we will look start with the language modeling task. Well, let me start with the POS tagging tag. POS tagging, ठीक है. So you're all familiar with the POS tagging tag uh, task in which the number of inputs is equal to the number of outputs. In other words, the sequence length of the input is equal to the sequence length of the output. Input are words, output are tags corresponding to each word in the input. Okay. So we defined input as X, right? As a sequence. So for example, I live in Lahore. And the Y for this would be, I of course is a determiner, live is a verb, in is a preposition, and Lahore is a noun. Okay, so this is what we want as the output sequence. So how would a neural network, a recurrent neural network process this? So obviously at the start, uh, you have X1, uh, which is the representation for the word I. Okay. So remember for X1, you also need A0. So A0 is usually all zeros. Okay. So of course you have the parameter Ws and Bs, and this would give you as output A1. Okay. So this A1 output, uh, so, you, so output would be, so this is input. So you have output A1. And from this A1, you also generate Y1. Okay. Now this Y1 uh, would be a distribution. Uh, of course, Y1 is a vector because this is going to be softmax through softmax. So this would be a distribution over the possible tags. And if you're doing prediction, we will be selecting the tag which has the highest probability. Okay. So this is the distribution over the uh, possible tags, in this case, uh, the POS tags. So, so that's, you have inputted I and you've gotten an output Y. Similarly, you go to the next one, A2. A2 would be for live. Okay. So from this, of course, A1 would be from the previous iteration. So you have this and from this you get A2 as output and you get Y2 as output. Okay. And essentially Thank that's you. how it continues. So this is Sir? a feed, feed forward process. Uh, any question? Yes, sir. Sir, you said that we will generate A1 from A1. A1 से Y1 generate नहीं uh, A1 से क्या? जो हमने X1 और A0 को input लिया अपने network में, जी जी. तो उससे हमारे पास फिर A1 आएगा और फिर उससे Y1 आएगा ना? जी जी. ठीक है सर. इसी तरह ही है. So हमने X1 input किया था, A0 input किया था, 
उससे हमारे पास ए वन आया था उस ए वन से फिर हमारे पास वाई वन आया था ठीक है सिमिलरली जब फिर हमने नेक्स्ट टाइम स्टेप में जब हम जाएंगे तो हमने एक्स टू इनपुट किया और ए वन जो पिछले टाइम स्टेप से आया वो इनपुट किया इससे हमारे पास ए टू आ गया और फिर ए टू से वाई टू हमारे निकाल लिया एंड वी कंटिन्यू इन दिस फैशन सो दिस प्रोसेस एक्चुअली इज फीड फॉरवर्ड जस्ट लाइक फीड फॉरवर्ड इन स्टैंडर्ड न्यूर नेटवर्क मतलब हम अज्यूम कर रहे हैं कि हमारा नेटवर्क ट्रेंड है डब्ल्यूज एंड बीज आर ऑल फिक्स एंड वी आर नाउ feeding in values and generating my our y's so you notice that you get a y at each time step which is appropriate for this application because is application mein har time step pe humko ek label chahiye har uh, time step keh le ya har uh, you can say sequence position pe humko ek label chahiye theek hai any other question uh i think let's briefly discuss the uh the training process as well uh for this particular exa uh, example uh we are not going to go into the math of uh, back propagation but you need to understand the process so the y's that are written there these are the y's that are generated by the uh the neural network so i will call those y just to make the distinction y prime so you have a y prime t at each time step this is generated output and then i will call y t as the actual or slash desired output right so y t without the prime is assumed to be the label that you have in the data set the training data set and y prime is what has been generated by the neural network and now i'm talking about the training process so the 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 process that i mentioned earlier was the prediction process or feed forward or forward propagation theek okay. hai and training process uh, the specific training process and algorithm is often called backward or back propagation theek okay. hai so since now for each time step you have an a desired or actual output and the predicted output you can define a loss function so you have a loss function so loss function for each time step since of course for any given problem you will have multiple time steps usually a batch of time steps so training is often done for a batch of time steps at a time not at each time step of course you can do that as well but usually that is too much processing so you typically do it for a batch of time steps so how do you so loss for for a batch of time steps is simply the aggregated loss for each time step in the batch ठीक है सिंपली सम ओवर ऑल द टाइम स्टेप्स सो लेट्स से ऊपर वाला सेंटेंस था मेरे पास आई लिव इन लाहौर लेट्स से उसके लिए हमने करना है तो यू विल हैव बेसिकली फोर टाइम स्टेप्स सो यू विल एग्रीगेट द लॉस फॉर वन सो यू बेसिकली सम ओवर सम फ्रॉम आई इज इक्वल टू वन to 4 so actually this is uh, somewhat the latex notation uh, for the sigma subscript i is equal to 1 to 4 theek hai and then of course we have the loss 
the loss function for basically time step i. So you simply aggregate the loss for each time step for the batch, in this case, one sentence of four words. Uh, whatever that loss is, per usko error ko phir aap back, back propagate karenge to update the weights, update the parameters. And the process is exactly the same. You use uh, gradient descent, uh, stochastic gradient descent uh, approach, and you back propagate the error to the parameters. So you can also think of this as multiple layers. So remember, how a time step ko ek separate layer be assume kar sakte hain. Theek hai? So you can think of, if you think of a standard neural network, usme multiple hidden layers hoti thi. Layer one, layer two, layer three. Ab isme aap, if you want to build an analogy to that, you can think of each layer as a separate layer in time. So matlab, you will have a layer for time one, you have a layer for time two, you have a layer for time three, and you have a layer for time four. Hai? But the difference of course is for each of these layers, the parameters remains the same, or in other words, the parameters are shared across time. While in the standard neural network that we saw earlier on, each time or each layer had a different parameter. Here, all the parameters are the same. So WAX, for example, or WAA, WAA, this is the same for layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. They are shared. Of course, this is just to build a better analogy with the standard feed forward your networks. Of course, there is just one layer in the recurrent layer, but since that same information is propagated four times, we can think of four separate layers. But each layer has the same parameter. Okay. And then you can then apply your standard back propagation layer by layer from the last layer to the first layer. But of course, the parameters in each of those layers are the same. So the layer four mein parameter you update the layer update honge jo layer one mein update honge. Parameters were yeah, W A A or W uh, uh, A X. So this is, as I said, also called B back propagation in time. Any question? So just to summarize, uh, in a standard, in a recurrent neural network, and for let's say the task of POS tagging, you have an output Y generated at each time step. So we compare that output with the desired output that give us a loss. And of course, if it is in this case, multi-class classification, we will be using the multi-class cross entropy loss function. Okay. So you have a loss at each time step. So you typically would ag aggregate loss for multiple time steps, usually some unit of your processing. You can call it a batch. And then that aggregated loss is then, uh, you can say distributed back into the network or pushed back into the network to update the parameters. The parameters of course are WAX, WAA, BA, BY, as well as WYA. Okay. So just one other thing, and we will discuss this later on as well. So remember the Marapas output layer had the YT is equal to G, let's say, W, Y, A into A, T plus B, Y. So if you look at this equation, this is actually the equation of a standard feed forward layer, right? 
So actually, this is a feed forward layer. So oftentimes when you study recurrent neural networks, they will talk about a recurrent layer and a feed forward layer. So recurrent layer ki equation was the upper wali thi, and the feed forward layer ki ye equation. Hai. So they actually two layers in a network. And if you are, if you think about deep networks, each of these two layers could be multiple layers. Just if standard feed forward network mein multiple hidden layers ho sakti, to ye bhi multiple ap kar sakte hain. And in practice, oftentimes it is done. मतलब आप समझें कि आपका जो रिकरेंट लेयर से जो लास्ट आउटपुट आ रही है लेट्स से 100 यूनिट्स की आ रही है वो 100 यूनिट्स फिर एक फीड फॉरवर्ड लेयर में गुजरती है सो लेट्स से 100 आउटपुट है आपका ए का ठीक है सो नाउ यू मूव इट टू मल्टीपल फीड फॉरवर्ड लेयर्स उस 100 को पहले आप लेट्स से 75 में से गुजारेंगे फिर लेट्स से 50 में से गुजारेंगे एंड देन फाइनली यू हैव द आउटपुट so now you have two hidden layers and then the output layer. So this is going to be a uh, two layer feed forward network that is attached to the output of the recurrent layer or that is uh, processing the output of the recurrent layer. And similarly, there, there could be multiple recurrent layers. But there could be multiple. So multiple. So for example, first layer could be just giving an example, let's say uh, 300 units. So second layer would be, let's say 100 unit. And that let's say this is the final layer. And then is 100 ke baad phir aapka feed forward layer shuru ho jata. And of course, these two layers are in series. Pahle ki output dusre pe jati hai. Jo A1, A, AT niklega, wohi AT dusre mein jayega. Okay. So in this way, you can actually build bigger networks or in general, you can say deep networks uh, by having multiple recurrent layers and having multiple feed forward layers uh, for your problem. Okay, so now let's look at another application, which is our well-known language modeling. Okay. So in language modeling, uh, the traditional language modeling that we have studied so far, the idea was given the context, which was usually the previous uh, sequence of words, we would like to predict the next word. Okay. So in this case, uh, let's say our prediction or the sequence of words is Y, the output that we desire is Y, which let's say I live in, let's say Lahore. So what would be the input for this? So if you want to get the output I, which is the first uh, value in Y, you typically would be starting with some X naught. Okay? So X naught, could be a start of sentence token or it could be all zeros. Okay. And then to predict the second word, which is live, you're giving the input i. So x1 would be i. And then of course, it will continue in this fashion. For the third, you give live and it will predict uh, uh, in. And then you give in and it will predict Lahore and so on. And finally, you give Lahore and it will predict the end of sentence token if you have one. Okay. So uh, in this case, like it's like self supervision. You have a sentence and from that sentence, one time step behind is the input. Uh, sorry, you kind of move it forward. I mean, if you look at the diagram, so jo y tha aapke paas to y ko thoda sa right pe shift kar diya aur ek x not dal diya which is usually all zeros to ye aapke input ban jayegi so what is happening again if i write it start mein kya hoga x not denge 
ठीक है आप प्रिडिक्ट कर रहे होंगे आई आउटपुट इज आई फिर आप आई देंगे आप प्रिडिक्ट कर रहे होंगे लिव फिर आप लिव देंगे आप प्रिडिक्ट कर रहे होंगे इन एंड फिर आप करेंगे इन uh, करेंगे तो फिर आप प्रिडिक्ट कर रहे होंगे लाहौर एंड देन इफ यू हैव एन एंड ऑफ सेंटेंस टोकन एज वेल सो लाहौर तो आप बेसिकली यू एस प्रिडिक्ट करना चाहेंगे so this is how you have this is how you build the training data set for training a recurrent neural network for language modeling ab isme dekhiye ki aapne aapne ek level piche diya uh, as input but remember through your a t minus 1 all previous context is you can say theoretically preserved ठीक है इवन दो यू आर गिविंग एक्स टी बट थ्रू ए टी माइनस वन जो प्रीवियस कॉन्टेक्ट था प्रीवियस वर्ड जो आपने दिए थे वो भी आपके मॉडल में आ रहे हैं ठीक है सो इट्स नॉट लाइक ए यूनिग्राम मॉडल और ए बाइग्राम मॉडल या ट्राइग्राम मॉडल इन जनरल इट इज एन एन ग्राम मॉडल any questions all right <clears throat> okay so this was uh, uh you can say the process of generating the data for language modeling and then of course you can use it for training training would be done in the same way as we did for pos tagging for each input x we have we know the actual output y and then we can compute the loss and through that loss we update the parameters so once the network has been trained you can then use it for getting the probabilities of new sentences or even for generating new samples so let's say you have a trained rnn language model so training humne kar li jis tarah maine aapko bataya aapke paas x aur y leke aapne training kar li using minimizing some loss function Uh, usually the soft max, uh, sorry, the cross multi class uh, cross entropy. Okay, so now you have a trained language model. So for from a trained language model, you can then, as for any other language model, you can then estimate the probability of uh, next words and complete, uh, you can say sentences. so how would we do that so let's say uh mere paas wahi sequence hai let me koi aur sequence le leta hu he studies at lums theek hai so let's say mera task hai ke uh so so i have written this let's say i want the probability for this next word he studies at एंड देन नेक्स्ट वर्ड का मैंने देखना है तो इसमें हम क्या करेंगे जो ट्रेन नेटवर्क है उसमें आप ही ही देंगे ठीक है एक्स वन ठीक है सो so ही से वो आपके पास नेक्स्ट आउटपुट देगा आई एस आई एस की ऑफकोर्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन देगा बट वी नो इट इज आई एस सो आई एस की जो प्रॉबिलिटी होगी वो हम लेंगे गिवन ही तो इन अदर वर्ड्स फ्रॉम द मॉडल वेन वी गिव इन ही एच ई इट विल जनरेट ए डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओवर सो इट विल जनरेट ए डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओवर वर्ड्स गिवन ही ठीक है बट वट वी वॉन्ट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ इज गिवन ही तो वो आप निकाल सकते हैं नेटवर्क से जो भी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन थी उससे आपने इज की प्रॉबिलिटी ले लेनी है ठीक है एंड सिमिलरली एज यू मूव फॉरवर्ड By the way, यहां मैंने सिर्फ प्रीवियस ही लिखा है बट इन कॉन्टेक्स द न्यूर नेटवर्क इज कंसिडरिंग द होल प्रीवियस कॉन्टेक्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल नेक्स्ट लेवल पे हम जाएंगे सो प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ इट विल गिव यू वर्ड्स ऑल द वर्ड इन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन गिवन द प्रीवियस कॉन्टेक्स नॉट जस्ट ही इट विल बी इज एंड ही ठीक है 
or what I want is the probability of in given is and he. ठीक है सो उससे मैं एक प्रॉबिलिटी निकाल सकूंगा एंड सिमिलरली फॉर द लास्ट वर्ड इट विल गिव यू दॉबिलिटी ऑल वर्ड गिवन इज ही एंड इन अब यहां से सिंस आई वॉन्ट टू डू द प्रिडिक्शन आई विल टेक द मैक्सिमम अब कौन सा वर्ड था जिसमें गिवन दिस कॉन्टेक्स इज ही एंड इन वुड बी द बेस्ट फॉर दिस बिकॉज हमको वो नहीं पता तो अब ये डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन से जो हाइएस्ट प्रॉबिलिटी वाला वर्ड है वो हम प्रिडिक्ट कर लेंगे एंड आई एम अज्यूमिंग लम्स मे बी इट्स नॉट लम्स बट इफ इट इज अ वेरी गुड लैंग्वेज मॉडल इट शुड बी एबल टू प्रिडिक्ट दैट वेल ऑफकोर्स ही स्टडीज एट लम्स लम्स के अलावा बेशमार वो यूनिवर्सिटीज भी हो सकती हैं तो यूजली लम्स ही मैक्सिम जरूरी नहीं आएगा बट आई एम जस्ट गिविंग द प्रोसेस कि आप ये किस तरह नेक्स्ट वर्ड प्रिडिक्शन करेंगे यूजिंग न्यूरल नेटवर्क आपने ही इनपुट किया आपने इज इनपुट किया आपने इन इनपुट किया अब उसके बाद जो आउटपुट आ रही है उसकी मैक्सिमम जो भी प्रोबेबिलिटी जो वर्ड था वो आपने आउटपुट कर लेना सो दैट इज प्रिडिक्टिंग द नेक्स्ट वर्ड सो ये प्रिडिक्टिंग द नेक्स्ट वर्ड है सिमिलरली लेट्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द प्रोबेबिलिटी द एंटायर सेंटेंस तो जो मैंने राइट हैंड साइड पर चीजें लिखी हुई हैं Uh, so let's say I want to predict the he studies at uh, at था के in था ऊपर मैं in लिखा था but should be at at lumps so इसमें अब if you want to find the probability of the entire thing तो आपने उसी neural network के जो outputs for each of these words आपने ले लेने जो right hand side पे मैंने लिखा हुआ था probability of uh, he given whatever starting multiplied by probability of uh, he lives uh, he study sorry given he start multiplied by probability of uh, studies at given he studies and so on to so, saron ko multiply karenge to ye puri sentence ki aapke paas ek probability aa jayegi so given a trained network we have done it to predict the next word which is the first case given a trained network we are able to predict the uh, probability of the entire sentence theek okay? hai using a neural network of course but you can this is standard application of a uh, a uh, language model okay finally uh, a language model you can also use it for generation for language generation in other words you are sampling this model remember this neural network that you are trained is now a language model so you can sample this language model to generate new sentences jaise humne piche bhi dekha tha ki if you build a language model for shakespeare uske baad generation ke use karenge to you will get outputs that looks like Shakespeare, which is generation. So, ab neural network context me, am generation kis tarah karenge? So, isme, uh, so for example, uh, so we will start, of course, with uh, x not. ठीक है? X not usually at start would be all zeros unless you have something better, like the start of sentence token uh, representation. तो so, x0 जब करेंगे तो आपके पास y1 की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आ जाएगी ठीक है ना सो so, y1 की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आएगी रिमेंबर नाउ वी आर डूइंग जनरेशन अब इस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन से यू रैंडमली सैंपल एन आउटपुट सो यूनिफॉर्म होगी तो ऑफकोर्स दैट यूनिफॉर्म रैंडम आउटपुट सेलेक्ट हो जाएगी बट ऑफकोर्स ये डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यूनिफॉर्म नहीं होगी कुछ वर्ड ज्यादा प्रोबेबल होंगे कुछ वर्ड कम प्रोबेबल होंगे सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इसके लिए ऑफकोर्स आपको लेट से पाइथन यूज कर रहे हैं या कुछ और यूज कर रहे हैं आपको एक टूल मिल जाता है टू सैंपल समथिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू ए डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो अब लेट से आपने सैंपल किया तो आपको एक वर्ड मिल गया लेट से दी सेलेक्ट हो गया ठीक है सो दी हैज बिन सेलेक्टेड सो एट द नेक्स्ट स्टेप सो एक्स वन की X1 आपने फिर D की रिप्रेजेंटेशन इनपुट करनी है 
because you already know the first uh, input. Uh, sorry. What's happening? And then you will generate Y2. Y2 again would be a distribution or it's called sample karenge. Or jo bhi aapke paas randomly lafza aega wo aap generate kar lenge. Let's say assuming ke aapke paas kuch word a jayega. Let's say D ke baad for example D title aaga. Thik hai? So of course you continue in this fashion. So X2 jo hooga aapka wo title ki representation hoogi. आपके पास y3 की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आएगी उसको सैंपल करेंगे तो लेट्स से इज आ जाता है एंड सो ऑन सो इस तरह आप एक लैंग्वेज मॉडल को यूज कर सकते हैं फॉर जनरेशन सो दिस इज एक्चुअली समटाइम्स आल्सो कॉल्ड ऑटो ऑटो रिग्रेसिव जनरेशन वाई इज इट ऑटो रिग्रेसिव जो पीछे वाले स्टेप में जो आउट आपको आउटपुट आई थी वो नेक्स्ट स्टेप पे इनपुट जा रही है डी जनरेट हुआ था तो डी फिर आपने इनपुट किया फिर देखा कि नेक्स्ट क्या आ रहा है एंड सो ऑन एंड देन ऑफकोर्स ऑल्सो जब आपने एक्स नॉट दिया था और वाई वन जनरेट हुआ था और ए वन भी जनरेट हुआ है वो ए वन एक्स टू में भी आ रहा है तो प्रीवियस कॉन्टेक्स उस तरह भी आ रहा है प्लस ऑफकोर्स आपने जो आउटपुट पहले जनरेट हुई थी वो भी दे रहे हैं सो ऑटो रिग्रेसिव लैंग्वेज मॉडलिंग और इस प्रोसेस को जो पिछली आउटपुट को अगले आउटपुट में डालने के लिए इनपुट में डालने के लिए इस आल्सो समटाइम्स कॉल्ड टीचर फोर्सिंग ठीक है सो काइंड ऑफ फोर्सिंग द आउटपुट फॉर द नेक्स्ट स्टेप बाय पुटिंग इन ए वैल्यू दैट यू नो यू आर काइंड ऑफ लाइक द टीचर और द एक्सपर्ट and you're forcing the output at the next step theek hai all right <clears throat> okay now let's look at another application so so far we have looked at pos tagging and pos tagging and named entity recognition would be the same type of task in which case for each word you want to predict a label so the input sequence length is the same as the output sequence length so then we talked about language modeling in language modeling of course from the output sequence length you generate the input sequence and here of course the input sequence length and output sequence length are the same ठीक है सो नाउ लेट्स लुक एट फॉर एग्जांपल द टास्क ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन बाय द वे इन योर टेक्स्ट बुक दे डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन सीक्वेंस लेबलिंग व्हिच इज लाइक द पीओएस टैगिंग टास्क और द एनईआर टास्क इन व्हिच केस यू असाइन अ लेबल एट ईच टाइम स्टेप एंड देन दे डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन सीक्वेंस classification so in this case you are basically generating a label label after some sequences not after every input so ps tagging mein ner mein every input ke baad ek output aa rahi hai sequence classification mein every input ke baad output required nahi hai ya desired nahi hai so we we will only like an output after seeing a sequence of inputs so typical examples here would be let's say let's say sentiment classification topic classification and so on 
सो सेंटिमेंट क्लासिफिकेशन में क्या होगा सो so, पूरा एक सेंटेंस मिल जाएगा या पूरा पैसेज मिल जाएगा उसके बाद एक लेबल चाहिए मुझे ठीक है सो so, इसकी एप्लीकेशन देख लेते हैं सेंटिमेंट सो so, आपके पास एक्स जो इनपुट है इट्स अ सीक्वेंस ऑफ वर्ड्स और पैसेज ऑफ वर्ड ऑफ कोर्स for which you want to assign one label not a label for each word but one label for the entire sequence so for example that movie was great theek hai ab iski out output jo y hai this is just a scalar that is uh, generated after seeing all of those inputs in x so this would be simply yeah, positive negative ठीक है सो ऑफ कोर्स इन दिस केस दिस इज वॉट इज नोन एज द मैनी टू वन प्रॉब्लम ठीक है ना बट अब आर एन एन इसको किस तरह सॉल्व करेगा लेट्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सॉल्व दिस यूजिंग आर एन एन प्रीवियसली हमने इसको देखा था कि इसको हम स्टैंडर्ड फीड फॉरवर्ड न्यूर नेटवर्क से कर सकते हैं यूजिंग ए रिप्रेजेंटेशन फॉर द एंटायर input sequence or maybe taking a window of the input sequence actually we usually use the entire representation for the input and then we generate an output but recurrent neural networks mein kis tarah hoga for example d input jayega right aur uska ek output potentially aa sakta hai why but wo hum nahi consider karenge we simply given the second input d movie then the third input was and then the fourth input or phir finally uske baad y hum generate karwayenge theek hai and this y4 would be either positive or negative meaning that you have a sigmoid uh, activation function a binary classification layer after the fourth input into the network तो so, पहली इनपुट को भी नहीं हमने कंसीडर किया दूसरे को भी नहीं किया तीसरे को भी नहीं किया चौथे के बाद हमने फिर आउटपुट ली सो दिस इज हाउ यू यूज एक्चुअली ए रिकरेंट यूर नेटवर्क फॉर ए मैनी टू वन प्रॉब्लम और ए सीक्वेंस क्लासिफिकेशन प्रॉब्लम ऑफ कोर्स डिफरेंट सेंटेंसेस would be of different lengths ab ye sentence sir char words ka tha the maybe the next example might contain 20 words so you will have to uh tell the network when you want to desire when you want the final output time step batana padega kis time step pe aapne final output leni hai wo batana padega aapko so 20 pehle wo process karega fir uske baad jo 20 ke baad jo output aayegi wo aapki final output hai नीचे हो गया वह ये मेरा कंटेंट लगता है ऊपर नीचे हो गया वह एनी वे ठीक है so for many to one problems you only need one output after reading in a sequence of words theek hai so in the previous two examples where you have uh, many to many so you need you you get an output after reading in each input theek hai so there is 
a special case of many to many in which input and output sequence lengths are not equal theek hai to isme example humne last time discuss kiya tha for example you can think of machine translation so in machine translation your x is the input sequence of words in one language and y is the output sequence of words in another language theek hai uh and of course the length of the words in x and the length of words in y may be different because one to one mapping to typically nahi hoti one language to another language so in this case both input and output are multi uh, both input and output are sequences but those sequences are of different lengths so is case mein generally jo hum kiya jata hai and we will discuss this more later on here i'm just going to mention it we actually use two rnns one after the other and this is sometimes also called encoder dash decoder model the first rnn is the encoder and the second rnn is the decoder and this so the first rnn for example mere paas sentence x leta hu main english mein uh he lives in lahore aur why main generate karna chahta hu urdu mein let's say uh, uh i don't know i'm going to write in roman urdu wo lahore mein rehta hai theek hai na of course in this case mere khayal se dono ke number of words same hai but uh, in general they would be different <coughs> तो इसमें क्या होगा जो फर्स्ट आर एन एन है फर्स्ट आर एन एन वो बेसिकली आपका इनकोडर है इट विल रीड इन ऑल द वर्ड्स ही लिव्स इन लाहौर सारे वो पढ़ लेगा ही भी पढ़ेगा लिव भी पढ़ेगा इन भी पढ़ेगा लाहौर भी पढ़ेगा अब लाहौर पढ़ने के बाद जो फाइनल आउटपुट आ रही है इसकी विच इज ए फोर ठीक है ना ए फोर आएगी ना लाहौर पढ़ने के बाद वो फिर आप फीड इन कर देंगे into the second rnn which is also called a decoder theek hai ab second rnn ke paas puri information aa gayi input ki he lives in lahore ab second rnn phir aapko one by one just like uh humne upar sampling ki thi language modeling ke sath wo phir output generate karega urdu ke to ek ए फोर जो पिछले नेटवर्क का था वो नेक्स्ट नेटवर्क का ए नॉट होगा ठीक है ए नॉट के साथ फिर आपने एक्स नॉट भी को स्टार्टिंग देना है वो आपके पास वाई नॉट जनरेट कर देगा उसकी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जनरेट करेगा वहां से आपने एक वर्ड ले लेना होपफुली इट इज वो लाहौर में रहता है यू यू बी एबल टू जनरेट ऑल ऑफ दैट सो नाउ सिंस द सेकेंड नेटवर्क इज kind of a generator model just like we saw for sampling in language modeling it can be of any length there is no restriction you get generations of multiple outputs and we will discuss this in slightly more detail when we discuss uh, machine translation theek hai so machine translation hum a couple of lectures ke baad hum discuss karenge the thoda sa over detail mein discuss ho jayega but essentially yahi idea hai input network takes the whole sequence of words ab uski jo final output hai wo next network ko di jati hai aur wo phir works like a language model to generate the new uh, words in the second language theek hai so that's the decoder the first is the encoder and usually we train both of these together so we will discuss this uh, in machine translation so i think uh, we have a quiz as well so i will stop here so are there any questions any questions
So please uh, read uh, the textbook as well, along with the videos that I shared uh, for Andrew Eng uh, on LMS. So this is uh, chapter eight and nine of this textbook. So this is a web page for the textbook. You can get the individual chapters from this page. So this is the standard neural network chapter seven. So chapter eight is uh, basically using standard networks for sequence labeling, as well as it also discusses HMM, which we already discussed. And then nine is about RNN and GRU and transformer, which we are discussing currently. Then after that, we'll discuss translation and then contextual embedding. So this is what uh, we'll be discussing in the next few weeks. ठीक है, so आप quiz की भी तैयारी करें.